Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a quick review of this DeWalt D21009. So these came out about 20 years ago. They were replaced maybe five years ago or so with this style of DeWalt. And the only real, the only difference is just uh, a change in the plastic housing and they did put more powerful motors. This is six amps and then when this style came out, they came out with seven amps and then uh, they went up to 8 amps, and that seems where they've settled at. These are 2,500 RPM drills, which is a good all-around speed for drills. And I still like uh, quarter drills. They just seem to be a lot easier to handle and deal with, uh, especially for a variety of drilling projects. I guess even to this day, and having you know some decent cordless drills, uh, I just like the way quarter drills just generally operate. And I think the D2109 is probably the best as far as overall ergonomics. These weren't great drills, but they're still one of the most common. These are the most common ones I do see used uh, is these DeWalt's. People just really liked them compared to the Milwaukee's, Makita's, all the other brands that are out there. DeWalt, uh, actually Black & Decker has always outsold everybody as far as quarter drills have been for probably a century. And uh, it's still held true with these DeWalt's. Most people don't know that, but Black & Decker has sold, sold a million quarter drills by 1930. To give you an idea how many they've sold. Shame to everybody else. I wasn't so fond of this newer style, mainly because they put a bunch of bulk on the gearbox. This is a DW112. And for no reason, it just makes it kind of look cooler. Maybe they thought it was more comfortable, but I really didn't like that much. And then the rubber overmolding, which doesn't really add much comfort because rubber overmolding is just so thin. Uh, I just never saw the point of it, really. I, and I've kind of come to that conclusion that rubber overmolding is basically pointless and an unnecessary expense. Um, so I like this style be just because the older one is just a little more rounded of gearbox. So it's easier to hold and be more delicate. This top part's a little bit more rounded and ergonomic uh, versus it being just really squared off up here. It, you know, the trend of uh, having the bubble level has been around for a long time. And even on the newer ones, they got rid of the little lanyard hole, which had been on DeWalt drills forever. But they had do did keep the little hook on the handle. That's something that Milwaukee has missed. And it's a big short side on Milwaukee drills because you're drilling and if you're carrying around, it's much easier to have it hang. And then this just catches on your finger so you can just hold it nice and easily when you let it drop down. Where in a Milwaukee, it falls out of your hand. And that's ergonomics. I'm sure Milwaukee's are better drills. I mean, really for a drill, I'd like to have a drill that has uh, DeWalt ergonomics, Milwaukee build quality, and a lot of the cases I found that Makita motors are really well balanced and, and quieter. So I'd like to have a Makita motor with Milwaukee build quality and DeWalt ergonomics. That would probably be the, <laughs> the perfect drill. So anyway, uh, DeWalt has been making this style drill, Black & Decker, since the 80s. Um, and as far as interchangeable parts, I'm sure that the trigger, pretty much everything except for the housings and the motors, because it is bigger, the motor is about a half inch longer in this newer DeWalt with the 8 amp motor versus the 6. But the output gears and all that are the same. You can just swap them between these tools. If they ain't broke, don't fix it. And of course, I did like having an opportunity of making, I'm surprised for how common this drill is. If I, I searched YouTube, I was just typed in D2109 and like, Nothing came up. It's like, come on, DeWalt has probably sold hundreds of thousands of these things. Give it a quick run. So, of course, the keyless chucks, is, they did uh, modify it, put a little bit better keyless chuck on the newer ones. It's basically the same thing. This is, uh, even 20 years ago, they don't have, well, I don't have a flashlight, but they don't have a lock screw. They just torque the chuck on tight enough to where it can't unscrew under any type of reversing operations. But I always like the ergonomics. Pretty stiff match uh, stick reverse, two really comfortable two fingers trigger, really nice and linear on these. That's what I also liked about it. You can just go super slow. And it's really pretty darn linear. So not everything is super great, obviously. It's the Walt. This one's not too bad in Maine, New Mexico. But the worst issue with these drills is they're all, all just about all ball bearing construction, there's a what is known as a nose bearing for extra support in the, the gearbox here, and I'll open this up real fast. The issue is the plastic housing, the steel, two steel ball bearings that hold the spindle as these get used and dropped and bumped around. The steel ends up beating up the plastic, and you end up with this issue. This one's obviously in very con condition, so it's still pretty t 
uh, definitely tighten there, but it can get loose and then this can start wobbling back and forth and it tends to wobble side to side as it beats up both these sides versus a slightly thicker area on the top and bottom of the seam. So I'll have less wobble up and down and if you tighten down the screws, it kind of squishes it more and kind of tightens it up. And so that's always been the issue I found is on really used ones that wobble side to side. And the best thing to do is get, you know, go to Harbor Freight, get some shim stock like this and actually cut it to shim up each side of the bearing to tighten that up. And that's how you deal with the side wobble. That's the biggest issue is just because they have a plastic housing trying to support steel bearings and they will squish and beat it up. Anyway, only seven screws to get this open. So even though they don't use a lock screw in the uh, truck, they torque it on. But the one caveat, many drills, that's a big issue because you're trying to pound on the Allen wrench. You can end up destroying gearboxes. It's actually really difficult. But it's actually okay on a split case drill because when you pull apart the case, you can just pull off the gear, put a couple pieces of wood in your vise, and then vise it up literally just by the gear itself, put an Allen wrench and get all the torque you need. So at least in this instance... They have, I don't think, I don't know if this one has a half inch spindle. It may, but for a long time, uh, in the 80s, these had 3 8 spindles. And then sometime between the, the late 90s and the 2000s, uh, they started going with half inch spindles on these because they were getting bent too easily. And that's what's always nice. And that's why the chuck on that other drill I showed, the DW112, uh, was so big. is because I put a half inch chuck on there, not because I'm running big bits with it, because... Uh, it just happens to be handy. Sometimes you only have a full shank half inch twist drill and you're drilling in wood, so you want to run it fast, but you need a half inch chuck. Super simple drills, just regular old uh, power switches. You do have the asset tag in there, which they've been doing for a really long time in tools. Tools are unfortunately pilfered so much that they straight up uh, put these tags uh, in the tools. Now, admittedly, I've run into a few old DeWalt tools with these uh, switches that have failed. And I can see around the reasons why. You can just see there, it's only a 6 amp rated switch. So it's only rated really as much as the full output of the motor, which is kind of disappointing because, of course, electric motors under heavy use will surge a lot more power. Um, it's a Mark Hort, so it's a decent quality switch, but it would have been nice if they had uh, over specified that just by a little bit more, even though I do like it. There's no bellows back there, but I guess they're kind of banking on the big trigger kind of guarding it. Real simple, you just have your regular ball bearings back here. It's a rubber seal on one side and a metal shield on the back side because it's kind of already protected by the case. Clock springs with uh, the little brushes that have this or that are direct wired. Excuse me, no, these little brushes don't. Some of the other ones do, but these brushes are just little pieces of carbon with little clock springs. These happen to have little copper fingers on them, which I kind of like. Super simple, not a lot, you know, this is a cheaper motor, so there's no wrapping. Not a, there is a little bit of uh, uh, lacquer on these windings so they don't vibrate around, but they're pretty you know exposed. Nothing really too special. These drills were only like seventy dollars on the shelf, and really uh, overall you kind of got you know what you paid for. They are decent. One thing that I do like about Dewalt tools is that they have really long. They've really tuned the material of the specific alloy of the commutator and the brushes really long lasting commutators and we can see on this one here this drill's been hardly used and as cheesy as all this really you know is not as heavy duty as it could be all the the motor here i've seen an awful lot of these style drills that have been some of them just super beat up broken housings and the motors always seem to work so really that's all you need um, one th the thing that they've learned a lot of tool manufacturers is that even though finer gear teeth are quieter uh, gear longevity has more to do with, cro I mean, it has to do with a lot of things. One is specific materials. Two is how well their alignment is maintained. Uh, gears can last forever or they can blow out in weeks if they're poorly aligned. That's why it's important to keep this chuck nice and tight. Um, it's also cross-sectional area. So they just, this is a super coarse tooth, four tooth motor armor. The teeth, because it allows the teeth to be much taller and you get more cross-sectional area. There's more steel to last. It makes it so thin that they use just a little oil light bearing on the nose of the motor, so there's actually bearings on both sides, so under heavy-duty loads, this doesn't deflect downwards. And that's really all there is to the inside of one of these things. Super simple. 
dual ball bearings on the spindle, and it is nice to see it, uh, an oversized larger bearing right on the front there. Anyway, let's do a couple of drills. Here we are with a good old wood block. I just put it in a half inch bit, but this is just what these would, these are a normal, what would be a better quality, much better quality than like a Harbor Freight. I'd certainly recommend it if you just aren't somebody who does much projects, but just wants a general drill, you know, get one of these DeWalt's or something because you'll get, end up having something that you can be confident with that you can just hold on for years and years and, uh, you know, or any other good quality brand but it'll actually have a decent amount of performance when you actually want to do some type of project. Just got a half inch twist drill just to show, you know, pretty quick, even at 2500 RPM, which some people think is slow and some people think is way too fast. This is one of those progressive flute dwalt bits and man, they just grab and want to like screw themselves into the wood. I'm also cutting through some of the holes down there, so it's artificially a little bit too fast. Maybe I should go right here where I don't have as much uh, clear, or I don't have uh, undercuts. Each time the drill is like doing that bogging down thing, I'm sure the motor is surging at least six amps. So that's the biggest disappointment. They should have put in a better trigger, and I have seen them fail before. And I suspect the ones that are failing is when they've been put under pretty heavy duty loads, but you can see six amps is really all you needed. Let's do a couple of driving uh, applications. And yes, the biggest problem or half the problem with these keyless chucks uh, isn't just the fact that they are keyless, but the, it, since it's a quarter drill, they're a dual collar and there's just isn't like any space right here to grab onto to actually get very much force on it. And that's why I've always put key chucks on them. The wall in this era did have one uh, a different model was like the D1, I don't know, 21006 or something like that, which had a key chuck, but it was really terrible. We got a couple of three inch deck screws, so let's just see how it does with these. I mean, it'll do just fine, but just to show you, you know, these are pretty universal, even being able to drive deck screws. If I can get. Oh, come on now. Whoop, went way too far on that one. And that thing's gonna be burning hot. So, at this speed, you probably didn't even see that, at this speed, it's a little bit hard to maintain a fair amount of control when setting the depth. And that's probably the biggest issue because you gotta be near full power and then it just wants to uh, fly away. So if you're pretty careful, you can set screws pretty, pretty well. I'll try that now. And you can set them pretty well. So that's another situation where if you do built a deck with this, eh, I don't know if the trigger, it probably would. There hasn't been that many that I've seen with bad triggers, but, and maybe it's just because DeWalt sell, sold so many of these that I've seen a bunch with bad triggers, but it's always been the biggest concern and kind of why I've always liked 1200 com RPM construction drills is because uh, you get a little bit more control, a little bit less load, that type of thing but these are really not too bad. So that's all I really had for this. It was just a quick review of, well, not so quick, but a review of this DeWalt D1, D2109. So this was just an ubiquitous DeWalt drill. And uh, quite frankly, as far as just overall industrial design, the smoothness of the body, six amp motor, 2,500 RPM and the ergonomics. Um, I was zoomed in way too much. <laughs> I think these were probably one of the better drills that were available just as a, you know, a regular 3 8 quarter drill that you could generally rely on and that worked. And it always puzzles me about ergonomics because it's not like it's rocket science. It's kind of the same thing that puzzles me about car engines. Why they still leak oil and have blow head gaskets when engines have been manufactured for over 100 years. It just doesn't make any sense. You do get more reliability out of a drill, and these old DeWalts really are not too bad. For most people, they'll be just absolutely perfect. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.